Meiosis was one of the top topics for 2025 that based on the past paper analysis that I said is highly likely it could come up for AQA A-level biology. So stick around as I go through some of the hardest types of meiosis questions to come up to get ready for these questions. Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick. If you are new here then I've been teaching since 2009 and we're about to go through some past paper type questions to get you ready for the exams in 2025. So let's get into it. Okay let's get started on these questions then so question one plant species one has a diploid number of 20 chromosomes and 10 pairs of homologous chromosomes so i'm just going to add into that that means diploid is 2n so that means 2n would be diploid which is 20 n would be 10 which would be haploid but they're just stating you've got 10 pairs and that's how it makes it 20 in total the diagram below shows six possible arrangements of chromosomes in cells which diagram above correctly shows the chromosomes in this plant after meiosis one and meiosis two so after the first round of division and then after the second round of division so after meiosis one you have already had one round of division so let me just draw that up here so there's our first cell in which we would have 20 chromosomes the homologous chromosomes separate in meiosis 1 so that means we would now have 10 chromosomes in the second round of division it's the chromatids that separates so that means you still have 10 chromosomes in all of your four daughter cells it's just in at the end of meiosis 1 they are still made up of two chromatids joined together at the centromere whereas at the end of meiosis 2 they just appear as a single thread like structure so if we then have to work out what would it look like after meiosis 1 well after meiosis 1 we'd have 10 chromosomes and they'd all still look like two sister chromatids joined at the centromere which is b and then after meiosis 2 we still have 10 chromosomes but they appear just that single thread like structure which is picture e Question two, we have scientists developed a mutant form of the plant in which crossing over during meiosis does not occur. Okay, so there's no crossing over in meiosis for this mutant variety of a plant. The mutant is still capable of sexual reproduction. So the fact that they're telling me that implies that you're still gonna have fusion of gametes, which introduces genetic variation. So we are asked to compare and explain how genetic variation arises in the mutant compared to non-mutant versions of the plant. So they're basically asking here, how is genetic variation introduced if you don't consider crossing over? Because that's not happening in this mutant variety. So I'm going to say, first of all, point out that difference. So mutant has no crossing over, whereas non-mutant does. They said sexual reproduction still occurs though, so I'm gonna add in both have fusion of gametes as a way to introduce genetic variation. They both will also have independent segregation. Right, so that's three marks. We've got three points because we've said no crossing over versus there is, fusion of gametes, and the having independent segregation. Right, question three, other than mutation, describe and explain two ways in which genetic variation arises within a species. So this is really similar to the last question we did, but this is more worded as a knowledge-based question rather than application, which we had on the previous one. And this is four marks this time. So other than mutation, which actually in that previous question, you could have said that as well, both will still have mutations occurring if you were wondering. So for this one, other than mutation, describe and explain two ways in which genetic variation arises within a species. So I'm gonna say crossing over in meiosis and gonna to have to explain that. So that means you get new combinations of alleles in the gametes. Then I'm gonna go for independent segregation. Oh, in fact, actually crossing over in meiosis, one thing they've got really particular on that I need to add into that, crossing over of homologous chromosomes. Homologous. Do not forget that they were really picky on that in the mark scheme. I nearly did forget it, so you don't. Independent segregation. And again, you have to say of homologous chromosomes. 
That also gives you new combinations. But for this one, I'm going to say of maternal and paternal chromosomes in the gametes. Now I have got four there already, but I'm gonna go for one extra just to make sure I've covered the basis. So let's just read the question again. Other than mutation, describe and explain two ways in which genetic variation arises within a species. Do you know what? Actually, no, I'm not. Because I've specified two, I'm not gonna give two because if one of them's wrong, then it will counteract one of the correct ones. So I've got two, I've got crossing over, I've got independent segregation, and I've explained both of those. Okay, next question. Explain how meiosis results in the formation of haploid cells but we don't have to describe anything about genetic variation so this time we're just thinking about haploid cells so if we think about humans we have 46 chromosomes in a diploid cell after meiosis one we've separated the homologous pairs so we now have 23 and that actually is now already haploid because 46 is 2n 23 is n that's one copy but we do actually then have another round of division which is how you separate out into the chromatids which when they're then by themselves they're known as chromosomes again so explain how so i'm going to start off by saying dna replicates in interphase and that's how we end up going from having a chromosome that looks like this to a chromosome that looks like that we've got two sister chromatids joined together then we have two rounds of division to create four daughter cells round one of division separates homologous pairs homologous pairs of chromosomes to make it haploid so this is kind of similar to the diagram picture we had, but we start then with, in terms of our 46, we have 46 chromosomes that look like this. We've got the homologous pairs and they've got two sister chromatids. After the first round of division, we don't have homologous pairs of chromosomes anymore. But we do have those sister chromatids still joined together. And that's then when after that round of division, the second round, we would still have, so that is diploid, haploid, haploid. It's just here, they appear as two sister chromatids joined at the centromere, and here it's just a single chromosome structure. Okay, next question. Figure one shows the chromosomes with a cell undergoing independent segregation during meiosis one. And we can see here, we've got homologous pairs lined up at the equator, and we've got maternal and paternal being shown as white or black chromosomes. We're told that a scientist examined 250 cells, which were also at the same stage of meiosis as shown here. Assuming no crossing over, calculate how many of the 25 cells would look identical to this. So your hint here is the fact that they've said they're in independent segregation. We have got four homologous pairs shown and the formula to work out how many possible combinations there are of how they can line up at the equator is two to the power of n where n equals how many homologous pairs you have. So we need to do two to the power of four which is 16. So that means there's 16 possible combinations of how these chromosomes could align at the equator. We have 250 cells. So what we need to do is divide 250 by 16. So 250 divided by 16, because that tells us how many of the cells will be in that particular stage. So let me just do that. 250 divided by 16. So that is... 15.625, but we need to have it as a whole number. So they would accept probably 15 or 16 for this. I'm gonna round up and say 16 cells because there's 16 possible ways they could align. There's 250 cells, so let's see how many times that would fit in, and it is 16. Okay, next question. Figure one shows the chromosomes, so it's the same picture that we just saw, undergoing independent segregation during meiosis one. But this time, we have to draw a diagram to show the chromosome content of one gamete produced by this. So this is in meiosis one. And if you remember, we said you go from having 2n to n, so I should say n, and then it is still n in the final stage. And they want us to give one gametes. So at this point, you would have 
homologous pairs looking like this. It's two sister chromatids joined together. Here we you still have them looking like that. And here they're then singles. So we need to show this is after meiosis one. Those are all going to be pulled to that pole. Those are all going to be pulled to this side. And then they would be separated again to be just the single chromatid. But you're going to have to have the correct colors and size. So I'm gonna go for the bottom side for mine. So I'm gonna do that sort of medium sized one, which is dark. The bigger one, which is dark. We've then got the smallest one, which is white. And then another medium one, which is dark. But you could have done it the other way. You could have done white, white, dark, white to represent that. Okay, final question. The diagram below shows the life cycle of a fungus. The fungus has an asexual and sexual reproduction stage in its life cycle. So this is where it says in the spec that you need to be able to identify where meiosis is occurring in unfamiliar life cycles. That's the concept here. But we've actually been given this. We've got diploid to diploid. We're showing this stage is growth. And we're shown here the diploid we then split in half but here it's joining together so what is the name of the process shown at a now for meiosis you always go from diploid to haploid so that means it can't be meiosis because we're going from diploid to diploid fertilization you always double the content usually you're going from haploid to diploid and we aren't doubling we're going diploid to diploid so there's no doubling so it can't be that one mitosis you're making identical copies binary fission you're also making identical copies though and these are diploid to diploid so that would work for both of them however we've been told it's a fungus and binary fission happens in bacteria so it can't be binary fission it had to be mitosis so that is it for these meiosis questions hopefully you found it helpful and you're more confident knowing key marking points the types of questions that can come up including the maths and if you do need more help with key marking points and don't forget to check out my a-level notes so i go through examiner's tips key marking points and summaries for all the topics.